I think it's legitimately funnier because I'm actually drinking a matcha tea while I'm doing this. I love matcha tea, by the way. Hey guys, welcome back. For those of you who are new, my name is Dre. I do makeup, skincare, and handbag videos with the occasional emphasis on Chanel. So if that's a content that you like, subscribe for more. I was debating on doing this video for a while just because I know it can get a little tricky when you talk about a company, um, especially a company as large as Nordstrom. Now, I'm not here to badmouth them. I just want to spill the tea. So a lot of the things that I'm going to mention are consistent like across the board when it comes to working at Nordstrom. And then there are definitely some things that is kind of exclusive to what happened at my store. Let's see what I end up editing out. I want to be as real and as raw as possible. And every every store, every company has its politics. So wherever you work, you're always going to have politics at work. My particular store was quite a big door. So sometimes the bigger the location is um, and the more revenue it generates, the more drama occurs. And that's just that's just what happens. Like more money, more problems, I almost want to say. But um, let's just jump into it, I guess. So this is the tea at Nordstrom. First things first, um, I worked in the beauty department, as you guys know. Or may not know maybe you guys just clicked on this video because you saw the title when you work at Nordstrom um, you get paid a little differently so when you work in the beauty department um, you get paid a base rate with 3% commission and I think it's because the items are less expensive so um, there are some items that are $20 $10 $5 so if you're just gonna be solely based on commission which is your 3% commission It'll be really hard to make a living selling only lipsticks, for example. So that's why the beauty department got a base rate in addition to um, commission. Other departments, such as luxury handbags and clothing, I believe, were only commission. So life got hard. <laughs> um, as a salesperson at Nordstrom, like life gets hard. So working at Nordstrom, everything is sales-based. Like your life is sales based whether or not you're a good salesperson like you have to sell because they're on you about numbers all the time all day every day like how are your numbers how are your counters numbers like what are you at for the day like have you met your goal for the week the month the quarter blah blah, blah. like numbers 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 like when you work there like your life is going to be about sales and numbers and that's something that you're going to have to embrace or if you don't like that don't work there I mentioned in like a previous video about like what to prepare for when you start working at Nordstrom. So one of the things I mentioned is that you are, like I said, you are sales based, but like you do have sales goals. So you have a daily goal that you're supposed to meet and you have um, a pay period goal that you're supposed to meet and you have like a monthly goal that you are supposed to meet and they all kind of go into each other. So they take your monthly goal and they break it down into like your days your hours and stuff like that and if your sales goals aren't met like there are repercussions like you can get written up for it um management will talk to you about it if you are consistently not making your goals um it can become an issue and then if you're interested in moving up at all so the only upward mobility you have at nordstrom is a management position whether it's um, a counter um, manager position or a department manager position um, or even like transferring to a different department like if I wanted to go from like beauty to clothing or like luxury handbags or shoes or something like that like they will look at your metrics so if you're consistently not making sales goals like there's no way that you're gonna move anywhere it's difficult for upward movement or even like lateral movement it would even be difficult for you to transfer to another store if your numbers aren't being met and a lot of times to supplement these sales goals, um, sales goals are met by events. If you're a Nordstrom customer, I'm so sorry um, because I am sure you have people blowing up your phone left and right for freaking events. So a lot of times um, the, the store or like the department in general have events to just kind of like boost our numbers and stuff like that. And a lot of our sales goals are based off these events. For example, if you're a customer and you're a Nordstrom card holder, you might be aware of triple points. Just like most 
card perk, um, you get a point for every dollar or two points for every dollar. Um, for Nordstrom, I believe it's a point for every dollar. But in this particular case, for during triple points, you get three points per dollar. And after a certain amount, you get 20, a $20 note to spend at Nordstrom. So, you know, it's the fastest way to accumulate your points so that you can get your reward, so that you can go back and spend more. I know. So whether it's like a whole store event like triple points or sometimes we have anniversary sale which is like the biggest sale in smack in the middle of summer that Nordstrom has every um, year. So that generates a lot of income and during times like that, critical times like that, we as employees are expected to sell much more. I'm just gonna throw out an arbitrary number. So maybe, so per week, maybe you're expected to sell a thousand. Maybe during that time specifically, like during triple points or something, you're expected to sell 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So our goals are dramatically increased during those times and it can get pretty freaking stressful. And then the other thing that I freaking hated is because these events generate larger sales goals they pressure us to call our customers so they're always walking around are you calling your customer texting your customers are you messaging your customers and the way that they verbalize it to us they tell us that you know it's really important that we let our customers know that there is this great event coming up because we don't want them to miss out on it but in reality like you just want to pull customers in and that's why it's important for you at this point to have like a really large customer base like which is kind of hard because you're sharing customers with like everybody else in your department so like it, it gets really tricky there too where you constantly have to like text your customers like hey we have this event coming up or like we have this event coming up or hey it's triple points or like we have like winterize your skin or like summarize your skin i don't freaking know like there are so many events that are constantly just rolled out back to back and we're always expected to call our customers to like let them know to come in and we have to book appointments so like if you're a, a Nordstrom customer and you're getting texts to like come into this event or blah 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 like that's why because essentially it's our responsibility to let our customers know that this great event's coming up and like we don't want them to miss out on it so that's the narrative behind what goes on. So, and I didn't like it because I felt like I was constantly harassing my customers because I was not an aggressive salesperson. Like, because as a customer, I didn't like being harassed. As a person who doesn't like to be harassed, I definitely didn't like to harass my customers. Especially I'm like, they just came in and spent like $300 with me. Like, I can't ask them to come in in a month and spend another couple hundred. Like, like that's not fair, you know? Like, I know money is finite for a lot of people and it's just it's a blessing already to have them come spend with me like and to constantly ask them to come in and spend more money more money and more money like uh, I don't know like it just it never settled well with me um, I'm very thankful for the customers who are financially secure enough to consistently like spend because I was one of the younger um, sales associates at my counter a lot of my customers were around my age and guess what people around my age we'd be broke so it was hard like it was, it was hard for me to like achieve the thousand dollar sales that some of my coworkers were making like my sales didn't come close to that and they were on me about numbers all the time like you have to be a little more aggressive when it comes to selling blah 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 blah, blah. but the thing is they hired me because i was younger and they wanted me to reach out and to relate to a lot of people my age but what they forget is that people my age don't have money I don't know, I can go on and on about that. Just to piggyback off of what I was just saying about like, you know, customers and all of us calling customers. So I do the same thing where I shop at multiple brands. Like maybe I like my foundation from Chanel, but I like my mascara from like Armani, but then I like my blush from MAC. So I shop at different counters and a lot of customers shop at different counters. And the thing is with every purchase that they make, I, you know, we are instructed or encouraged to go ahead and save their sale into um, our system. I, I understand the theory behind it and I do agree because a lot of times I've had a customer come back and they're like, oh, I need my foundation but I don't remember the shade. So I could just look up their name, review the purchase history and I can see their foundation shade um, and then we can go off of there. But the thing is, every sales associate at every counter will do the same things. So say we have this one customer and she shops at Mac. So my girl at Mac will save her purchase history and then the same customer shops at Dior. And so my girl at Dior saves her purchase history as well and then I save her purchase history when she buys at Chanel. So during a store-wide event like this, like we have already like three people calling this one customer, telling her like, hey, we have this like great event, like you wanna come in? It kind of like creates this weird competition amongst all of us because we're all competing for customers. There are some 
um, sales associates there, especially the ones who are a little more seasoned, that can be a little territorial about their customers. Like they'll say, oh, it's my customer. Like, you know, I work with her and I work with her only. Um, even though management has specifically said that like nobody owns a customer, which I agree because, you know, a customer can shop with whoever they want. So you can't lay claim to a customer. But a lot of more seasoned beauty advisors have done that where they're like, no, that's my customer. And they will throw a fit about you working with a, with a certain customer just because they've helped them on multiple occasions. I'm reticent to say that it's a toxic environment, but it's a very difficult environment to balance. You have to be mindful of your sales goals. So you have to call your customer in to sell to them, but at the same time, you have to keep in mind that you wanna make your customer comfortable. And then on top of that, you have to be mindful of your coworkers who might also be helping this customer. So it's just a very difficult situation. So the whole sales, aspect of it was definitely something. Also, scheduling. Oh my god. And this is the same thing with like restaurants or any job that's not a corporate job. I know a lot of friends of mine have fallen, not victim, but like, you know, get kind of stuck in the same hamster wheel. Um, scheduling sucks. Your days of work are not consistent. Like, you'd be, I was very, very lucky. Um, I was very blessed <laughs> and I was, I'm, I am very thankful that my counter manager was very, she was very accommodating and she did not have to be. So those of us who needed a consistent schedule, she definitely allowed, but overall, like um, the majority of my coworkers in the beauty department and even in other departments did not have a set schedule. So I was very lucky to have a set schedule, but at Nordstrom, like you do not have a set schedule. Like some days you'll be off Monday and Friday. Sometimes you'll off like Tuesday, Wednesday, like you might get two separate days off. You're lucky if you get two consistent days off. When I first started and I wasn't in school yet, um, my schedule was super sporadic. Like it was all over the place. My days off were, were totally unpredictable. And the thing is these schedules, they come out three weeks ahead. So it makes planning your life very difficult. And the thing is you always have to work weekends. Like nobody gets Saturday, Sunday off because Saturday and Sunday, um, they tend to be very high traffic days. So you need all hands on deck when it comes to your counter. Um, and a lot of events are held on that day too. So, and like, let's be real. A lot of people do their shopping on Saturday and Sunday. So that's why no one gets Saturdays and Sundays off. Like you might get one day off if like you request it, but otherwise as Saturdays and Sundays, like everybody at your counter is there. So it makes selling so hard because imagine like, eight people, one counter. So everybody's fighting for a freaking customer. So, you know, scheduling, you your quality of life definitely goes down. And then scheduling hours, you don't get consistent hours. Like there's no one that does like nine to five each day or like 10 to eight. Like one day you might open and then the next day you might close and then you might get like two random mid shifts. Like you, it's very unpredictable. It comes with the territory and you do have to deal with that because I missed out on so many family events because I was at work or because I couldn't get out in time. Like it's really hard to schedule a social life, especially when everybody has weekends off. And then, and of course, like you can always swap schedules, but, and I don't know about other stores, but like at my particular store, the department manager has to approve the schedule swaps and they don't really like us swapping schedules too often. So if you're hoping to have like a social life while working at Nordstrom, like it's not really gonna happen. And when it comes to vacation, like there are definitely blackout dates, like during summer, um, certain weeks in July, you are not allowed to take PTO or like any vacation whatsoever because the anniversary sale occurs during that time. So no, you cannot take vacation during that time. Like, sorry, or certain, or, oh yeah, all holiday. So um, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, they give you Thanksgiving day off, but like Black Friday, you have to work. Um, but Thanksgiving weekend, you're not allowed to take off. Um, the weeks during Christmas, you're not allowed to take off because it's holiday season and traffic is high. So again, they need all hands on deck to generate sales. And then there are certain days that, like I said, are blacked out that you are not allowed to take PTO. So if you wanna travel during the holidays with your family, like tough luck, sorry, you can't go. Um, if you wanna travel during the summer with your friends, like no, tough luck, you can't go. And it sucked, <laughs> it really did suck. Okay, so this is gonna kind of piggyback off like my thing about sales. So Nordstrom has a very, very, very flexible return policy, which is very easy on customers, but makes it very difficult on sales associates. Because like I said, 
our money is based off of commission a good chunk of our money is based off commission and the um, security of our job is based off of our sales. So when a company has a return policy that is as flexible as Nordstrom, that allows customers to return at their whim, it's kind of to our detriment. And I get it. As a consumer, I love a reasonable return policy because it makes it very easy for me if I'm unhappy with my purchase, I can return it knowing that I'll get a refund. Um, however, there are definitely customers who take advantage of it. And the thing is for the customers who take advantage of a return policy, like you guys, like it comes out of the employee paycheck. So for example, like we have customers that are buyers and returners. So sometimes there are GWPs, which are gifts with purchases. So if you spend over like $150, for example, you'll get a gift. So we'll have customers that will like spend $150 just to get the gift and then return all their merchandise, which sucks. The thing is when customers return, like, and I'm not saying that you don't deserve to return, like customers, like I return, everybody deserves a chance at returning. However, when you take advantage of the system like that, it really hurts the employees and their paychecks. And there's been times where like, you think you make a good sale, you think you've made a bomb $300 sale and you're super happy and then a couple days later you go in and you see that the item was returned so each day you can log in and you can see your sales so as you make sales throughout the day it keeps count for you like cumulatively so say i've made 500 dollars worth of sales that day decent day and then the customer comes back in and returns the 300 dollars sale that i thought i secured well now instead of 500 you got to deduct 300 from that so now that day i've technically only sold 200 and that sucks. Um, or what's worse, on a day, if I'm not there, if it's my day off and someone decides to return on my day off, I'm actually negative 300. I actually am, I'm in the hole. So now I owe Nordstrom $300 worth of sales. And I hated checking my numbers because it was, it was so scary all the time because I never, you never know when a customer is gonna return. I've had customers where they're like, oh, I'll take that and that and that and that and that. And like, they walk out with like a thousand dollars worth of sales and then they come back and return it. And I was like, for what? Like, what was that for? And the thing is, and it makes no sense to me. Like people who take advantage of the store policy, y'all need to stop. Or you know what? What really gets me is when, because makeovers are not free. Makeovers are complimentary with a purchase and if you think about it like it makes sense like you don't go in for a free haircut like you pay for that so why would you expect to go in and get your makeup done for free at Nordstrom so your makeup at, at Chanel we usually said that your makeover is complimentary with a three item purchase um, so a lot of customers will like come get their makeup done buy the three items and then go to their event prom homecoming red carpet event whatever it is and then they go back and they return the three items so stuff like that not cute didn't like that so that was stressful in itself and then i'm not gonna drop any names there was like always so much drama at my store like so sometimes like they'll tell you that you can't sell over a certain amount to like a certain customer but then sometimes the rules only apply to like some people and then you have some people that you see sell like a couple thousand dollars worth of merchandise and it's like what the heck how come you told me i can't sell you know a thousand dollars but like so-and-so can go ahead and sell like five thousand dollars like how's that okay but then you're gonna get on me about my sales and my goals like it makes no sense that's kind of what bothered me about management at my store um that the rules and regulations were very inconsistent like some rules applied to some people and then some rules did not apply to others and i didn't like that there was one time where um we had like a chanel beauty cart and that was put away upstairs. This was around a holiday because we had to bring down the gift wrapping table. So every Christmas, Chanel has a gift wrapping table that comes down, beauty cart goes up. And then after holiday, gift wrapping table goes up, beauty cart comes down. So beauty cart came down and um, when they had put it away in the attic, they had plastic wrapped it so that, you know, just to try to maintain the integrity of it. Um, and so we were just doing like a courtesy cleanup of it, just to wipe it down real quick and stuff like that. And we came across rat droppings rat droppings and we told management about it and I don't know if you guys know but like you should never touch rat droppings because it can be very toxic on the rare occasion fatal but 
you just should never handle rat droppings. Like it can, it can make you really sick. And so we told management about us finding rat droppings and the only thing she told us when we told her that we found rat droppings, she said, oh, keep it down so that the customers don't hear. Like what? So there was like no regard for our safety, hygiene, none of that. It was like, like keep it hush hush so that the customers don't hear about it. Okay, like I guess I'll just like go screw myself or something because like clearly like she did not care about us as employees handling rat droppings. She actually encouraged us to, to keep cleaning it up. I still have photos of the freaking rat droppings and like me and my manager and my coworker freaking cleaning that damn thing up. But management was kind of like, mm, I, I mean, I have words about management, but you know what? Like I'm not gonna get into that. And the thing is like some stores I heard have great managers and then some stores have not so good managers but again i think more money more problems like the beauty department at my particular store was very powerful um because of the clientele there um the clientele at my door specifically shopped a lot and the revenue that they generated was huge and money changes people but you know what working at nordstrom was not all bad because you do get discounts. So when you work at Nordstrom, Outlook, Nordstrom, Nordstrom Rack, you get your standard, any employee gets a standard 20% off. So I did a lot of my shopping at Nordstrom because like 20% off, hey, like, yeah. Um, and then if you're in management position or if you sold a certain amount each year, you get what's called pace setter. And, you're, um, and so you are recognized for selling a lot for those who are in management or sell a lot your discount gets bumped up to 33 percent throughout the year um, and then during holiday whatever employee has the 20 percent that gets bumped up to 30 and then anybody who gets a 33 gets bumped up to 40. so that was one of my favorite perks about working at nordstrom um, but i think my favorite part about working at nordstrom <sighs> which i really really miss i think this is like the only thing i miss about working at nordstrom gratis and i'm not talking sh like gratis from chanel this is different gratis so nordstrom does give gratis and i will touch on working at chanel at a later time but oh my god i miss gratis so if for those of you who don't know what gratis is gratis is free shit in the beauty department like we always got gratis and i'm not saying like you can just go in and pick and choose but it was one of the main ways that they incentivized us to maintain our cells so in the beauty department this goes for like most of the beauty counters companies would send testers little things that you see at the counters like that you're able to test so companies often send a lot of testers um sometimes they send an excessive amount of testers or sometimes they're you know some products get discontinued so if the product gets discontinued there's no reason for the tester to be on displayed and so sometimes the discontinued products they go into a bin or sometimes like i said some companies will send like an excessive amount and then there's no real use for them like for example chanel uses send like an exorbitant amount of like blushes or like certain foundations um or like certain powders so like sometimes when a company sends like way too much of something and it's getting to the point where it might expire it also goes into a certain bin um and it's either called like the discontinued bin or like the gratis bin so like stuff that the companies or like beauty counters like don't really need anymore um whether it's like too much of something or um it's being discontinued it just goes into a certain bin and then if we as sales associates hit our goal um, we get to pick something out of the gratis bin. So like sometimes they'll be like, okay, if anybody like on a particularly slow day, um, anybody who can sell a thousand dollars today, you get to pick three pieces from the gratis bin. So you get to go into the gratis bin, and you get to pick out oh, three pieces. Sometimes like there's fragrance in there, like full size fragrance. Or sometimes I think there was like one juicy one where like if your counter hit the goal that you're supposed to make like everybody gets like a five pieces of gratis which is like a lot and they said like a five pieces and it could be like for example like five pieces of skincare mm. oh my god so yeah i lived and breathed for gratis like and that's why like for a long time even now like i still haven't had to like purchase makeup because like makeup i have them in spades sometimes there's brand training and you get gratis that way too so a lot of times brands will come in like um either the education executive or like a representative from the brand will come in if there's like a new product launch or just um they want to like refresh us on product knowledge 
to kind of train all of us on how on you know the ingredients and the efficacy and basically like the history behind the brand so and these brand trainings usually last about like 10 to 15 minutes like that you just gather in a corner like on the floor and they just you know they're like oh this is a product we're talking about today this is what's good about it this is what we like um this is a brief history behind it blah blah so like if you go to this brand training a lot of times like they incentivize you with gratis um sometimes they'll give you like a baggie full of like deluxe samples like that's pretty bomb or and sometimes it could be like a full-size item so that I really missed and like, it was a great way for you to try out a lot of brands without having to fork over money and I definitely I miss that so much you guys um, and then sometimes these brands will even incentivize you for example like they're like for Creed they said that if you can sell 10 bottles of Creed like they'll give you a Creed fragrance for free so that was your gratis oh my god good times good freaking times I I, I really miss gratis that's like I think that's like the only thing I miss about Nordstrom but otherwise like the rest of the stuff that I mentioned don't I don't miss it another tidbit that like most people don't know about employees at um, Nordstrom most of the makeup artists there are not cosmetologists let me explain a lot of the makeup artists at counters are not professionally trained so I'm not talking about like trained by other makeup artists on, on like how to create a look or whatever because I feel like at this point like makeup artistry is a skill and if you can pick it up and with enough practice like anybody can become a makeup artist like it, it's a skill it's a skill that can be acquired with enough practice what I'm talking about is when you go to cosmetology school like they teach you very important things like sanitizing hygiene so with that being said and knowing that a lot of my coworkers did not have hygiene certifications um, the things that would bug me that most customers probably didn't notice double dipping double dipping is a big no-no especially for the testers if you're going to use it on multiple customers double dipping is a big no-no when we went to training at Chanel um, they taught us specific steps to take to avoid double dipping to be as hygienic as possible because I think they definitely were cognizant of the fact that not everybody is cosmetically trained so but not everybody has the same training so a lot of times like they'll grab a blush just like from the tester display and then like dip their brush in there and then like apply it on the customer like that's gross you don't know how many people have like gone swatched it with their fingers applied it on themselves like no so if you're getting your makeup done and you don't see your makeup artist like grab a tissue and like remove that top layer of blush before applying it on you that's gross that's nasty so yes there are disposable wands however if you get the mascara tube and you dip the wand in there and then you apply it on the customer and then you dip it back into the tube no uh -uh. and I've seen so many of my coworkers do that and I thought it's so gross so what they're supposed to do and this goes for mascara and lip gloss anything that's like dippable you grab a disposable dip it in apply it toss it grab another disposable dip it apply it toss it so there should be no like double dipping because if I'm gonna grab a disposable dip it apply it on you and then dip again there was no point in me using the damn disposable because like any bacteria that's like on my customer's face is now in the tube and I see so many of my coworkers do that double dipping with mascara and lip gloss I'm like you might as well have not used a disposable like you're just, at this point you're using a disposable for show if you're gonna get your makeup done at Nordstrom to be safe if you know what look you're going for just buy the items and yeah just buy the items and then have them use fresh products because testers not everybody is cautious with testers and I hate that that's the truth but that's kind of the truth I'm like what else was there about Nordstrom that's like tea worthy maybe if I do like a story time series on like work at Nordstrom because like so much crap I've experienced so much like just weird stories this tends to happen when you work in customer service like you come across like weird customers or you come across like weird co-workers or like you come across all walks of life when you're in the, the industry and things like you can't even talk about it well I can't now because I don't work there anymore of course like I'm thankful for the job um, it was definitely a good time in my life but towards the end like I I hated my job <laughs> I hated going there um, I hated being there every time I was about to clock in like my friends knew I didn't want to be there I, I just my quality of life definitely went down and I was 
I was looking for an out, but like I was complacent. But then like the universe kind of removed me anyway, so I think it kind of worked out. Now, I know it sounds like it sucks, but maybe because it just wasn't for me. Like for a lot of people, like working at Nordstrom was their livelihood because they love the competition. They love being incentivized like that. Like we all love the free shit. Like trust me, we all love free product. But for a lot of people, like interacting with customers and, you know, demonstrating their knowledge and they, they love that environment so they thrived in it for me like I thought I liked being in a very hands-on environment but after being in that environment I realized that I loved consistency and I love nine-to-five and that a desk job was not too bad so I mean hey I think it was a very eye-opening experience and I definitely valued my time at Nordstrom um, I met a lot of people some of my closest friends are from there I made great connections with a lot of customers. It helped me branch out my YouTube. I gained a lot from there, but like maybe it was just a store that I worked at or maybe it was the environment. It wasn't for me. Like I'm not a natural salesperson. Like I'm an educator. I'm a teacher. I feel like I'm going to follow up this video with like other story times. I'm using a straw to drink my tea because like I don't want my teeth to get stained. But yeah, this video is kind of long. I'm gonna see what I can edit down. It might be end it might end up being like super long, but it's fine. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if anything that I said surprised you guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I mean, now that I've severed ties with them in every way possible, like I feel a little more at liberty to like discuss things with you guys. Whereas before, like I felt like I was a representative of, you know, Nordstrom and I had to be a little more kosher about what I said. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. If any of this surprised you guys, if there was anything you wanted me to dive into, like pros, cons, stuff like that. Um, let me know if you guys have gone through something like this or if, if you're one of those people that freaking takes advantage of the Nordstrom return policy, like, mm. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. All my information is linked down below. Um, contact me at Kakao Talk if you guys want to chit chat with me and practice Korean with me. Um, I'm gonna link my tradesy down below if you guys wanna shop my closet. A lot of my items are brand new and I need to get rid of them, so help a girl out. I hope you guys found this video not helpful, but entertaining. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys again next time. Bye.